What's up guys, it's Lisa the paramedic and today we are going to talk about what you need to do to prepare for paramedic school. Let's be honest, signing up for paramedic school is a huge investment. You want to be ready on day one and you want to have the best preparation for the school you just invested your hard earned cash in or someone's hard earned cash, your company, your family, the bank loan, whatever. You want to be as ready as possible for paramedic school. It's expensive, it's time consuming, it's important, and it's life changing. If you can, go to a community college program. You will save thousands of dollars, likely get better education, and have more time to be exposed to the material. Because I can tell you right now, after being a medic for years, um, two semesters, or two semesters in a summer, is still not that long to practice in lab and hear your professors talk about the subjects, to then go out in the world and be like a real life paramedic. It's big stuff. Seven months in the classroom, you know, one and done is not not great. But the main thing is it depends on how much experience you have. If you've been an EMT for 10 years and you feel like spending $10,000 to get this shit done in a year, go for it. Find out if the program requires a written exam, skills test, interviews, letters of recommendation. If they don't, be very concerned. Because just like in universities, how there are diploma mills, there are paramedic school mills. What does this mean? You call up or you go on the web, send an email, get in the chat to find out more information. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you, your experience, really, you folded laundry in the hospital. That's going to put you ahead of everybody in your class. In reality, you might struggle a lot. They take your 10 grand, depending, you know, at what point you drop. And you're not a medic at the end and you're sad and life sucks. Um, don't do that. You is I, I know how that is. At 25, you feel like you need to be further in life. At 30, at whatever, we all feel that way. But please pick a good program. Um, I'm telling you, they, they should screen you. Not not that Hobbit test some programs have to let people in, which is kind of like a general knowledge test. But like, they should make you prove it. My medic school, you had to prove you had 2,000 hours working ALS 911 with a medic on a rig. I'm not kidding. And if it was like one hour off, you couldn't get in. We had to like print time sheets. It was pretty wild. But um, we had an experienced class and overall, the majority of people did well. Like, let's say 80 to 90%. Check if the school is accredited. Um, why? I knew people who were in a school that had been around for years. They lost their accreditation and then went out of business. The guys who were in their internships had to beg other programs to allow them to continue. So if they lose their accreditation when you're still in school, you might be forced to not finish your internship, start over completely, beg a school to get in, pay additional thousands of dollars to like redo clinicals or attend some kind of catch-up course. Just don't do it. It's a terrible, terrible idea. So. In this video, I will discuss all my best tips from going from an EMT to a paramedic. Watch the whole video for all the tips. So, we're going to first go over what do you need to do before medic school. The most important tip right now, right here, is work on a 911 rig for at least six months. I don't care if you're gifted. I don't care if you're better qualified than everyone you've ever met in your life to be a medic. Do it now. Thank me later. Better yet, Thank me later and then like bring lots of subscribers and likes to my videos for real. Um, six months mini minimum. Don't let anybody tell you you're smart enough or experienced enough or any of that. Don't let them tell you that with limited experience, volunteer experience, hospital experience. BLS IFTs are not enough. If you don't know what a BLS IFT is, you definitely shouldn't be in medic school. That's a basic life support interfacility transfer. Two EMTs going from hospital to hospital. Yes, it's important. Yes, the patients need you to do your job well, but it's not the same as a 911 call. You need to work 911, which will really mean, at most companies, working on a BLS rig for a few months, then getting pulled into the 911 system as there's vacancies. Learn how to be a great EMT on a 911 rig, and that is the biggest key to passing medic school. Um, without that, you might get A's in didactic, the classroom portion. You may do okay in clinicals because they teach you you know, how to bandage a wound, how to start an IV, some of the stuff you learned in EMT school, but you'll get roasted in your internship. Why? Several reasons. The preceptor you're with has to stamp their sign of approval on you as a safe beginner paramedic when you finish with your internship. Um, the thing is this, is working as a 911 EMT gives you time to learn all those basic skills that we take for granted when we're working in the field for years. What? Operating a gurney. Dealing with hospital staff. Um, navigating to calls. Learning the basic functions of the ambulance will take that off your mind and you won't have to stress about it when you're an intern. Fumbling with a gurney or not knowing where a C-spine bag is or what it looks like or basic stuff 
if you've never worked as an EMT, is very stressful as a medic intern. And this experience allows you to focus solely on learning to be the best paramedic intern and future paramedic possible. Besides that, other tips. Study some basic medical terminology. Why? So then you're not learning that on the fly either. Yeah, I know you'll get some of this in medic school, but if you do it in advance, it'll cut down on your study time. And there'll be so much to study. Anything you can spend less time on so you can go over the hard stuff is great. Get a hold of a medic book. So Brady, Sanders, Nancy Caroline, those are just some of the common manufacturers of books. Get one and start going through and highlighting now. Take a basic EKG class. This will also save you time and effort when learning later. I want you to learn how to identify normal sinus rhythm, what the P, Q, R, S, T is, and basics, bradycardia and sinus tachycardia. Too fast, too slow. That alone will give you a huge advantage. Um, if you're excited about it and you want to learn more, go for it. Take notes. But some of it is easier with the teacher, but if you start with that, you will be doing amazing as far as kind of being ahead of the game. Learn about home medication. Find out what do people commonly take for these things. And it, this is not an inclusive list. Diabetes, angina, high cholesterol, hypertension, and psych issues. Those are some of the run-of-the-mill bread and butters. Oh, and of course pain meds. Get in shape. No, seriously. Get in shape. You want to save your back, no matter how young you are. Organize your life. Drama, whether it's relationships, housing, or finances, will end you in medic school because they don't care why. If you're absent, you're out. If you score below 80% on a test and don't raise your average in some amount of time, you're out. So seriously, do it now. All right, some other tips. When you are in clinicals, take advantage of every opportunity to practice. Start a million IVs. Do as many patient assessments as you can, no matter how redundant it feels. You know, touch people. Learn to palpate the abdomen. Learn to feel skin signs. Learn to put those 12 leads on over and over and over and over. In school, cooperate with your classmates. Even if you're not a people person, a large part of getting your medic license involves working with people from different agencies, different experience levels. Some people you'll love, some people you, know, you won't vibe with, but you have to anyway, just like your patients. Um, after a test, keep going over the material. I know I'm guilty of this too. We learn what we need to for a test, and then we kind of forget and go on to the next thing. Keep reviewing. This will make your registry tests easier later and will help you in the field. Once you become a medic, don't stop learning. Don't get complacent. Don't think, oh, I've made it. I'm good. You have it. Your first year is a whole other wild adventure that I'll make another video about. Stay compassionate. Be kind to your classmates. Don't be a snob. Once you're prepared and in school, then comes the next challenge. Getting ready to pass National Registry Paramedic. Skills and Cognitive. That's another video. So what I want you guys to do since this is a new channel, leave comments with all your questions about starting medic school. And I'll make a follow-up video if there's enough questions. Also check out my website, theparamedic.net. There's a Q&A box there on the contact form. Send me your questions.